let me start by prefacing this video by saying Kanye and Drake beef is kind of what inspired this. But before all this really happened and became a mainstream topic that we're all talking about, there's a very insightful interview that I think you need to look at. And we're going to go through it and I'm going to skip to the main points, try to get to the main issue and the main theory that I'm trying to portray here. Follow along. Tell me what you think. And I think we will arrive at a mutual conclusion about how these two feel about each other. So stick around, bear with me, grab the popcorn. This should be kind of interesting. Okay, so first things first. Let's consider the time period in Kanye West's life, right? Let's pretend that around this time were his greatest years. Arguably, I'll say this was his best right here, coming around here. This right here, beautiful dark twisted fantasy. I'm going to tell you it's probably a masterpiece in terms of one of the greatest hip hop albums ever made production wise. Now, as we keep going toward this side, he begins to strip everything and completely change. And I think it's important to take a look at just how he's transformed over the years. And this is a great drawing, by the way. I think this was in, might have been a source article. So let's go back. Now you have to understand, as a long time Kanye fan, I had a lot to say about this project. And I really was, I really went into this way more optimistic and came out a little more let down. But I think. In terms of the overall beef and questioning if this is real, this entire plot line that seems very wrestling WWE-like, uh, I think this draws a lot of context in terms of what's going on, how they feel about each other, and hopefully by the end of this video, we can come to some conclusions about how they really feel. And I think this is a great interview. Shout out Adam22 because it gave a lot of insight into what was going to come later. And he doesn't typically get this intellectual with his guests, and he really gets pretty deep. And this goes into the like background and layers of everything when it gets to the level of superstardom. And I just really want to reiterate that the level these people are at, this should be able to explain a lot better. All right, so we're going to jump into it. And I do have some key points that I want you guys to to look at. So check this out. When you've already conquered rap, Travis, Drake, Kanye, they speak for the genre of rap. Mm. So when they go to the Grammys or they go to the highest level of music, we want y'all representatives. So the whole hip hop industry has something to do with a Travis album. Mm. The whole hip hop industry has something to do with a Kanye, a Drake album. Cause they have the resources to be, I want every producer that, I want Lil, who do Lil Baby beats, bring them up. Who do Nipsey beat, bring them up. Who do Roddy mm. Rich, bring them up. Who do anybody, bring them up here. Cause I, I'm gonna fly them out and see what they got. Mm. So everybody's contributing to our best artists to be able to put them on the stage next to Adele. Adele or Sam Smith walk up there and it's 30 people up there with them. Mm. I want to thank the violinist, the Miranda, the, the, the trumpet player, the piano, the producer, the whoop, the whoop. They got a whole long list, but a rapper, he got to go up there. Uh, I want to thank God, the engineer, <laughs> myself. Like it's hard to compete with 30 great musicians mm. And we trying to represent for rap or hip hop, and we can only be in there with the engineer and some weed. Right. It's like, bro, you're not going to. Okay, this is huge. This is super huge. I think people underestimate or they don't really have a grasp of what goes on behind the scenes. And it really fed a lot of like insight into what's really happening because nobody assumes that you're going to go get this super team. And everybody who's doing everything is going to be in the room helping you create the best project. Because at that point, these are just giant brainstorming think tanks. And when you have all these 
collaborative minds, when you come to a mutual consensus on if something is cool, the likelihood of a lot of other people agreeing is going to be pretty high as opposed to one guy not caring about what anybody says and that's my song and taking no input. This goes back to like the power of collaboration in general. Like if you want to get anywhere faster, you work together. That's the roots of hip hop entirely, right? Like you could battle on the streets and you could acknowledge that someone's better than you and you could become friends or you can literally just hate on the person and say they're trash and now you both trash. And I believe this is a KRS one quote that I'm butchering if you guys haven't heard that. So it's like, not only does the competition breed the creativity, but everybody who's anybody is helping contribute. And I think this is super important because hip hop has always been predominantly a solo sport, you could say. And it's very true, right? Like a country artist, a band, you're going to have way more people working on a project as opposed to like one artist who might not have nearly any, any money, period, just any money at all to invest in themselves, let alone their craft, let alone get merchant, you know, everything that comes with being an artist. So my point is Kanye started at the bottom, obviously, being in that position that he had to work his way up to have other people working under him. Now I'm going to get to this next part. At a certain point as a rapper, like, and, and, you know, I'm someone who, I loved Kanye's music and his verses before he probably even had writers. Mm -hmm. Like, he's, he's capable. Right. But at a certain point, it's like, well, when I know a guy who I can hire to have part of my team, and I know for a fact that he's one of the best rappers in the world, i.e. you, I would have to be a kind of a crazy person to not want to enlist the, the help of, of people like that, especially when he exists on such a giant level. Exactly. And it's like... And vice versa. The artist would be crazy to not want to work with that megastar who's going to put them on a whole other platform and expose them to a whole other audience. Not just that, but Sci High is like the ghost writer behind the scenes, so nobody knows what he's done or who he is, and he's just cashing in in the background, which is even cooler in my opinion. He already know he influenced me. Mm. Like, it's like, you hear how many artists sound like Drake? Mm. Like, like y'all singing about me more than... Because what he doing is natural. Then you got people that just sit there and study it. They so infatuated with it, they just study it. Like, man, like, man, to the point where you could do yay better than yay can do yay. Mm. You can do yay better than yay can do yay. I almost want to replay this clip again. Then you got people that just sit there and study it. They so infatuated with it, they just study it. Like, man, like, man, to the point where you could do Yay better than yay can do yay. Because mm. you just studied this man more than he just living his regular life. Because you're there to ghost write. So you're listening to everything. You're picking up on his enunciations. You're thinking of all his old projects. You're listening to how he talks. Literally trying to recreate what would Kanye say. Damn, he's brash as hell. He'll say anything. Is that where the whole bleached whole line comes from? Is that where that comes from? And he has to run all these businesses and shit. And meanwhile, there's rappers who don't have anything, anything going on. And they get to think about rap all day. Exactly. And at the time, he was that same rapper. Mm. He was in the studio helping other people, making sure their songs is right, writing verses. For, like, so it's like one hand wash the other, both hands wash the face. For sure. I don't even know what that analogy means. If anybody knows what that analogy means, please drop that in the comments. Also, subscribe. Thanks. But my point is, just like I was saying earlier, the guy who went through all the trials and tribulations, imagine working for him now as he's on this superstar status. I'd imagine everybody is like taken back. Because I, regardless of what you think about that particular statement or what he was intending to say, I think that it's a really scary state of affairs if people are scared to have interesting conversations because they're scared that they're going to think the wrong way. You exactly. know, in a perfect world, like, people should be so free to, to examine all the different potential routes of thought mm -hmm. that you should be able to dabble in thinking of things that are clearly... 
okay, this is not worded very well at all, Adam, but basically, layman's terms, he's trying to say cancel culture is a dangerous step to take for society. I wish he would have just literally said those words because I don't think a lot of people understand what cancel culture is and what it does and how it affects people. And it's not so much that you shouldn't cancel people, but more about how we go about doing it and the ramifications being equal across all punishments. You can't punish everybody the same. This is a super controversial topic. I might have to make a whole nother video on cancel culture. Let me know if you guys really want that. I'm talking like the history of it and really going far back. Really not ideal and you should be able to like at least let your brain float there and and see it from a different perspective or, or try to make sense of things and if we really make it so that like your career is over as soon as you say something that's offensive exactly. just for you pondering it i want you guys to really think about what he just said because specifically adam saying this more than anybody he would feel the ramifications of what he's saying more than anyone the type of content he makes, the things that Adam says, like Adam is so out of pocket all the time and he's hilarious, right? Like there's nothing wrong with how Adam speaks, how he behaves. He's a totally normal guy in my opinion, but he's right. You can't just start becoming super sensitive to the point of censoring your own self. That doesn't make any sense everybody's becoming under like their own microscope everybody's open to like so much scrutiny and i think it's because like society is so relaxed and we have nothing else to do like we can nitpick and put someone under such scrutiny so easily and what does kanye say what's he gonna do guys what's kanye gonna do act more stupidly okay we're getting down to the wire here that's very. That's a very negative yeah, state of affairs. That's a scary state of affairs. Mm -hmm. Like people don't know how scared it's. Like, hold on. So you saying, I can't even think. I can't be like, okay, but what about this? Well, what about this? I can't say what about this. Mm -hmm. Then it's like you can't question nothing. They could tell you, yeah, uh, it's snow in Texas, mm -hmm. but it ain't melting. Well, what's going on? <laughs> like, why is it catch? Why does it look like plastic? It's like. Right. We don't know. Why are you questioning it? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, th but that is a weird one because it's like, you know, myself, I would assume that the snow is melting and that in reality you're using the lighter. It's turning into gas right away. That's why it's not melting. But whatever. Right. It's okay. Right. But, you know, there's like a childlike wonder. I wouldn't necessarily assume. I, th I think mm -hmm. probably a lot of the people who are melting the snow with lighters are like crazy ass QAnon people or some right. shit. But yeah. you have to allow people the room to ponder stuff. And you just you know? taught me something. What? That it could be the gas. That's it. There's I believe that that's the explanation. Yeah. yeah but Look at that. Look, two things that I really need to point out about this conversation is one, Adam seemed a little kind of like condescending there. He's like, whatever, it's not important. Like he's trying to teach him, yo, this is a gas, actually. But Sci High is so open minded. Like if you listen to what he's saying, I can't even think. I can't be like, okay, but what about this? Well, what about this? I can't say, what about this? Mm. Then it's like, you can't question nothing. They can tell you, yeah. Uh. They can tell you what to think. Think about this. Somebody who's experienced so much and seen a lot, these people are afraid for a reason. To fear being open-minded. Like, hold on, so you saying, I can't even think? I can't be like, okay, but what about this? Well, what if what if we do no why don't we try nah so is it a bad idea if nah you shouldn't even think like that it's so limiting to put somebody in a box like this it's in a sense very stripped of freedoms about this i can't say what about this hmm. then it's like you can't question nothing they could tell you yeah uh it's snow in texas hmm. But it ain't melting. Well, what's going on? Like, why is it catch? Why does it look like plastic? It's like, right. Look at that face. 
you can tell people anything and they will believe it. That's what he's trying to say. At some point, people will stop questioning everything, and that's dangerous. This is the most intellectual conversation I've probably ever seen on No Jumper, way ahead of its time. Uh, okay, maybe like three months ahead of its time, but yo, this expression is priceless because seriously, people will believe anything. We don't know. Why are you questioning it? <laughs> we don't know. That's just how it is. We, that's just how things are. Why are you being weird and asking questions? There's no need to learn anything new. You can't just accept things for face value. You have to always question. And it's just super insightful to see this kind of conversation on this platform. But let me go to this point. Let me make a point real quick. I, th I think probably a lot of the people who are melting the snow with lighters are like crazy ass QAnon people or some right. shit. But you have to allow people the room to ponder stuff. And you just you know? taught me something. What? 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 I love the genuine curiosity of Adam wanting to know what he said that was so insightful to Sai High. Like, what? What did I teach you? And it just was like some simple textbook, gas, chemistry, dumb line. But it, to me, I'm like, dude, this is such a beautiful interview because Sai High is so open minded. It's the nicest thing i've ever like witnessed i think more people need to be open-minded in the sense of like learning in the sense of learning more people should try to be this open-minded and be grateful when you learn something new or at least like entertain the conversation when you don't know something like is that true should we research that can i educate myself about something i didn't know before I think a lot of people literally just run with what they hear. And I'm super intrigued every day when I find out more and more that a lot of people don't form their own opinions. And that blows my mind. So hopefully what I'm showing you right now can help you form your own opinion. And you don't have to take anything I say for what I say because what I'm saying doesn't even matter. One more point and I'm going to wrap this up. Stick with me. Man, if you made it this far, you might as well subscribe. I'm just saying. As a race. I mean, as a human race mm -hmm. in, in that in that uh, text. Definitely. Um, do you think Kanye and Drake will ever patch shit up? <sighs> I hope so, man. I hope so. I'll be one to, like, you know, I can't really participate. Like, I really want to. Like, I'll be like, I like Drake. Like, <laughs> You know, but I can't, you know, say it. But let me tell you something. He does, too. He loves Drake. Mm. He loves him, bro. Wow. All right, so let's imagine for a moment Kanye really does love Drake. Probably thinks he's just as prolific, one of the greatest artists of all time. And maybe Kanye's ego's a little hurt. One of the best comments I saw was, at least Drake finished his album, Touche. It's a good point. I believe Kanye has always led this notion that he seems extremely selfish as a person. And it really feels even more so like a giant money grab when you feature all these giant artists on your record. And then you don't even push your own self to do better than them. It's kind of interesting. Like at some level of success, it doesn't matter what you do. Anything you do will sell. And I felt like that about both of these projects.